Yo, welcome to Becoming Dope, which is all about my journey into filmmaking. And in my last video, Road to Virtual Production Part 1, I gave homage to this emerging technology with a promise to build my own virtual production rig. Well, it came time to finally put some money where my mouth was. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you how I built my virtual production PC. So in all honesty, this monster build of mine is really just a gaming PC on steroids that can also easily manage any photo or video editing work that I throw at it. It's also more of a virtual production PC for development rather than a full-blown VP operation. I'll have more than enough power to crush some cool productions that I direct and shoot with an Unreal Engine itself, but I've planned for an upgrade path that will allow me to sync together multiple LED walls for a real-time and photorealistic virtual backdrop that can also be properly synced with a live action composite. This will require some alternate and additional hardware such as multiple Quadro RTX cards in a Blackmagic Decklink Pro are similar, but I will introduce this all in a future build. For this build, I decided on the following components that would not only support my virtual production development, but also manage my Lightroom and Photoshop workflows, as well as editing in Adobe Premiere with ease. So I spent lots of time figuring out this configuration with a build price cap of around $3,000. This includes a Gigabyte Elite X570 motherboard, an AMD Ryzen 9 3900X 12 core CPU, an EVGA all-in-one RGB CPU cooler, 64 gigabytes of G-Skills RAM at 3600 megahertz, a one terabyte Samsung Evo 970 M.2 solid state drive, an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti Founders Edition GPU, a Seasonic 750 watt power supply, and to wrap it all up, a fractal design Meshify C mid tower case with the tempered glass. I also threw in a TP-Link PCIe Wi-Fi card, but I honestly don't use it because I have a wired LAN connection directly into my motherboard. And lastly, I purchased a Windows 10 Pro 64-bit license. Now, the only part I got price gouged on due to availability at the time of purchase was the motherboard. It sells for $200 and I paid $289. I just didn't want to wait four weeks for availability. So if I add it all up and include the $200 price of the motherboard with tax and shipping, this build costs a total of $2,994.11, just under 3K. So what I'm about to show you now was not only my first virtual production PC build, but my first PC build ever. And I felt it was important to include this disclaimer so you could be gentle with your comments below. Please note that I made a couple of blunders as I was building this out, quickly realized my errors and fixed them. So this video will not only show you what to do, it will also show you what not to do. Let's get started. So there was quite a few motherboards that I ended up looking at. Uh, in particular, the, the two that I kind of had my heart set on was the uh, Oris Elite X570. And I had also taken a look at uh, one of the ASUS boards. So I think it was a tough gaming board. Uh, I think it was an AM4 or A4. Uh, ultimately decided to go with this particular board. Uh, I liked the way that it looked. Um, and then I was also focused on getting a board that was um, something I could use and, and do upgrade with later on. So uh, first I was looking at micro ATX boards, but I ended up going with a regular ATX board. Uh, in particular, I wanted to make sure that I had enough uh, room to grow when it came to enough PCIe slots, um, as well as um, being able to expand memory. This actual board will go up to 128 gigabytes. Um, so let's take a quick look at this. Now this particular board is, is for an AMD chip in particular for the X570 the first time I'm opening up. Um, and this board is, I think it's around usually about $200, $210 or so. I ended up paying a little bit more for it just because um, <clears throat> I wanted to get the board sooner. And quite honestly, uh, a lot of these boards have been out of stock. So <laughs> this is the board here. Um, looks clean, looks nice. Uh, let me go ahead and take this and put this to the side here. Let's put this down here. So one of the first things that we're going to do with this board is we're going to install the the processor that we that we bought. Um, so I ended up buying an AMD Ryzen 9 uh, 3900X processor. So as you can see here, the Ryzen 9 3900X um, this has a decent amount of power to it. It's uh, 12 threads on this particular processor. Um, highly recommend it. I think this will help a lot with a lot of the uh, 
Photoshop and uh, video editing that I do. Uh, but in particular, I wanted to make sure that I had something powerful enough for a virtual production PC. And that's what this, this build is primarily about. This is about building out a machine that can manage the demands of virtual production. So let's take a quick look at this chip here. I have the option of using the, the Wraith cooler that this comes with. I'm actually opting to go with an AIO, which is an all-in-one uh, liquid cooler. I'll have a little, get a little bit better performance out of the chip. So let's put that to the side here. Now this is this is new for me, but let's take a quick look at this. Pretty straightforward in terms of what you need to do here. Look at that bad boy. And one of the things you want to make sure that you do is when you line this up, you see that little corner on the chip there. I don't know if you can actually see from there, but this will help to to show you where you need to line this up here. So let's go ahead and lift this arm here. And as you can see here. Should fit right in there nicely. Very simple. And if I lock this back down, that's it. Um, with installing the chip. Now, one of the next things that we need to do is we actually need to get our AIO cooler. I ended up going with this EVGA cooler. Um, it was fairly inexpensive. I think this cooler ended up costing around $107. And I believe we got this on Amazon. Um, pretty, pretty decent, de decent price. And after looking at the different reviews on it, the performance on this cooler is really, really good. Now, apparently it's supposed to be a little bit noisier, noisier than I may want it to be, but um, it was within my price range. I've been trying to keep this entire build under a certain dollar amount. Three grand was my absolute max. Um, and I was able to actually keep this entire build under under three grand, um, which was probably actually end up being something that would be closer to a $4,500 build if I bought this pre-built or if I had this somebody else build this for me, like an Origin PC or a, um, uh, a Bison. Um, so I decided to give it a go myself. It's not something that seems to be super complicated, but you do just have to be very careful when you're installing these different components. So let's take a look at this. Let's pull this out. Now, the one thing I do know is ultimately for this board, these pieces will go here. This is, this is new to me. I can see, look, some of that paste actually got off on my fingers there. Uh, there it is, that's that paste there. Now I actually ended up purchasing some other uh, thermal compound. Uh, this was something that was recommended. Um, this is MX4 by Arctic, as you can see that there. Uh, so I'm, I may end up using this. I understand that this is supposed to be better than what the stock compound, thermal compound is. So we may end up giving this a try instead. Um, I think basically I'll just have to remove this compound here. To figure that out in a second. So in order to actually mount this to this chip here, I wanna make sure that I'm doing this the right way. This is going to have to actually be installed. This radiator here is going to be installed on the top of my my box and top of my uh, uh, my case. So it looks like it's going to mount like this, and the cabling will will run like this, and then this will actually be mounted to the top of my uh, my fractal design case. So one of the things I want to do first here. I believe all of this is supposed to stay on here. There's a little piece of plastic. I can take that off, I guess, where I'm done is all. But I want to maybe take this paste off here. So that's clean. Put that off the side here. Um, let's take a look at here. Because when I mount this and I fix this, I want to make sure that this is mounting properly. I'm not quite sure if I need all of this or what I need in here. But there's all types of mounts in here a lot of this i'll figure out what it is as i go along here these maybe look like there's some offsets perhaps and some additional screws this says it's for amd specifically so i think that we'll end up using these to actually mount this to this board now i have this little bracket here and i see here 
that for this particular board, this seems to, to, to sit here and rest here. This may be the wrong size. It looks like this is maybe for a different type of board or for a different chipset or for a different GPU rather. I wanna say that this probably, right, this needs to come off here. So we're gonna remove this. Looks like it's just a, that's a pretty nice design. It just kind of twists right off there. And we're gonna put this one on instead, where we have to make sure that this actually lines up properly. So I'm gonna say here, and there we go, locks in place nicely. So we'll put the paste on there shortly, but I just wanna see how this lines up. It looks like maybe this is supposed to come up. I cannot tell. I mean, it's actually sitting on, it's actually sitting on the, uh, the processor right now. So I would think that this is pretty close to being the right way to do this. Um, but I don't know if I have to take this off. This must be the mount for if I'm using maybe a uh, um, in, in, an air-based or fan-based cooler to, to attach directly to the processor here. But I think I need to remove these so that I can put these in in, in lieu of that. So it looks like uh, I found the right standoffs. These are for uh, an AMD um, processor. So we'll take these standoffs here. We're gonna put these other things to the side here. And I think what we also need to remove are these uh, these these pieces here. I believe that this is going to be if you were installing the Wraith uh, fan-based cooler that comes with the Ryzen processor, but that's not something that we're going to be, be utilizing here. So um, let me get my little trusty Leatherman here. Um, so now we're going to take these standoffs here for. The AOI, the AIO cooler that we have here. I'm gonna screw these standoffs. So those are in. So I hand tighten there. All right, should be no problem there. And let's just kind of scooch this out, out, out of place here. And ultimately, this is going to fit just like so. Now we're going to need what's gonna actually hold this down in place once the time comes. So let's see here. Um, it looks like in this little package here, we have some additional pieces here. These look like the ones that we're gonna use to actually hold this in place. That looks about right. Yeah, this is correct. This will hold it in place. But before we do that, we need to add our thermal paste. So let's put this to the side here. We need to add our thermal paste here. So again, this is the MX4 thermal compound. Uh, and I'm just going to take this off. Make sure that we had contact there. So does this actually have contact? It looks like it does. Let me make sure there. We'll put that up for a second. And we're just gonna take some of this paste here and we're gonna apply it right to the processor here. And spread it around a little bit. Okay. All right. And we're going to put this right in place and on top. Make sure that we have a nice solid connection. Okay, let's take the cap here, let's put this back on here. Save that for another time. And now with that in place, we are going to go ahead and lock this in place. Now that still seems funny. See how that moves? We don't like
like the fact that that's moving. And that's something that's attached to this. Now this doesn't have another way to lock in that I'm aware of. Go ahead and put these tie downs. You see how this moves though? That, that, that still seems weird to me that this is a little wiggly here, but it's not going anywhere. The main thing is that we want to make sure that this is kind of separate, and I guess is a, I'm not quite sure what that is, but. Okay, so that housing is in place now. So the next thing we want to take a look at, the next thing we want to actually want to install is our memory, which is very easy to do. So for memory, we ended up getting this Trident Z RGB memory. It's got a little bit of uh, RGB in here to make it a little bit more fun, but I wanted to focus on getting memory that was going to give me uh, the ability to expand to the 420 gigabytes if I needed to. So uh, these are actually two uh, 32 gigabyte modules. So um, two 32 gigawatt modules and when I want to expand to to go up to the full 128 you know I'll have the opportunity to, to go to, to 96 with one additional module and then the full 128 uh, with a, an additional or a fourth module so <clears throat> go ahead and open this up and I think the one thing that we have to be be wary of is that we're installing these on you know, making sure that we're installing this memory in the right place. So we want to go with uh, the A1, B1 channels, or rather the A2, B2 channels first. It actually tells you right here on the board, A2, B2. So I'm going to put both of these modules, one in A2 and one in uh, B2. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's pop this off here. So it comes off really nice and easy there. Put that off the side. And uh, this is some nice looking nice looking memory module there. We'll put that right there. See here, uh, we can only go in one way here. I think it's gonna end up being this way. This where it lines up. Let's go ahead and make sure that this is opened up here and opened up here as well. Go ahead and do these as well. And let's see, is this the right? There we go. In there, and should get a nice little. Should just pop in. That's it there, and we just need to. Hmm. Let me make sure that it's fitting in. Did I have it in the right way? the first module let's go ahead and install the second module let's go this way here and get it in there eventually there we go and it snaps into place and locks in there and now we have our 232 gigabytes uh, modules of memory for 64 gigabytes to start. So that's it for our memory. Um, we're now going to move on to installing our Samsung M.2 solid state drive. So let's go ahead and grab that. This is, uh, so this is highly recommended, the uh, NVMe M.2, uh, in particular Samsung um, 970 Evo got a lot of uh, great reviews. Uh, this, this, this uh, module, the storage module is, it, it's fairly expensive. I believe that the price on this was around $180 for one terabyte. Um, you know, there were some other ones that, you know, that were priced a bit more moderately, but um, I went with what was recommended. I wanted to try to build up a machine that was gonna 
be reliable and last. So uh, I did heavily rely upon online reviews and recommendations. So this is what was recommended. So this is what we're gonna install here. Let's go ahead and open this up here. And this is just the first bit of storage. There are actually two M.2 slots on here. There's one here that has uh, the heat sink on top of it, uh, which is where I'll install this one first, I believe. Um, and then we also have this second location here. Um, but we'll go ahead and install this in this first location here. Let's take this out. There's a little memory, there's a module there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install this uh, Evo uh, M.2 solid state drive. This is a one terabyte drive. Um, the first of two that I'll end up getting, but uh, for this build, I just want to at least have one. I have to make a determination on whether this is going to become my boot drive or there's a little bit of research I have to do, but we're going to go ahead and install and get this built and I can figure some of those things out as we go along here. Um, we do need to remove this here. Let me see if this is small enough to get this screw out of here. Uh, looks like that might be a little bit too big. Let's go ahead and get the right tool for this slides right in there we'll put that off to the side here let's just go ahead and take this here we're going to insert this right into insert this right into here it's going to end up sticking up a little bit almost like kind of like a 90 degree angle but there it is and that's it once we put in the heat sink on top of that it should lay down just as it's supposed to okay so after doing a little bit of research you realize that this is actually uh, designed as a heat spreader so you actually do not want to remove this this uh, sticker here we're going to leave this on we just have this blue tape we have to take off of here the uh the sticky adhesive on the bottom we do want to keep that going though so we'll make sure that that doesn't come off so let's go ahead and put this on this will here and we'll just lay this right down on top. It's actually sticking there. It's making contact and we'll put this little screw right back in where it was here. We'll go ahead and screw this down. And our M.2 NVMe solid state drive one terabyte is now installed with the heat sink on top. I think the next thing we want to do is get get some of the stuff installed on our case. I'm going to clean up a little bit here, make room for our case, and then we can actually get this installed. So if we take a quick look at the case that we have here, this is a, a, a fractal design case. It's called a Meshify C. So we get a lot of good airflow through the front of this case because this is actually a mesh. I really like this design. Um, I wanted to make sure that you know, all my components are cooled properly so that I could have as much longevity out of this machine as I possibly can. Uh, so um, we're gonna take off this, this tempered glass cover here. This is a dark tempered glass so that uh, when I have all my RGB lights going, it'll, it'll look cool. So let's go ahead and take this off here and we're going to place our motherboard in here. But if we look in here, you can see that this board is gonna fit into here. Now, we need to go ahead and take these standoffs. The motherboard screws are going to screw into the standoffs, ultimately. Let's go ahead and get these in first. Offsets installed. Next, we want to go ahead and place our board in here. So let's go ahead and grab our board and let's be careful here. Let's lay our AI cooler out here for the moment. So let's make sure that we don't have any of these cables getting nipped or pinched. for a second, we want to have 
like this. Now laying perfectly on top there. And we have this little, uh, this, this offset, which is built into the case here, right there, which lets us know that everything is basically right where it's supposed to be. Right where it's supposed to be. So that's very nice. Okay. So with that said, let's go ahead and now tie down our board here. Um, here are our offset screws, or here are our board screws or motherboard screws. So let's take these. And we're gonna use this tool here. Drop that in. And away we go. Eight, beautiful. Okay, so we have our board now installed. What seems to make sense to me is now to get this radiator installed. Um, let's take a look. I can see here, there are these slots here that look like they will line up with where this is supposed to go. And here, ultimately. Um, Make sure that I'm clear. My cabling and everything here hanging off the front here. All this stuff will end up going to the, into the back here. These back, these back ports here. But this needs to be installed. This fits for a maximum of two fans. And I think what we'll need to do, we'll need to take off this. This, mag this piece right here, it's a little bit of a mesh piece that's got a magnet around the perimeter of it. So it sticks right onto the metal case. Um, we'll put this to the side for a moment. And we're going to, now that this board is in place, I'm going to actually turn this around. And I wanna take a look at how we're going to fix this radiator to the board here. I see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screw locations here. And these need, need, they need to sit flush. So let's take a look at what came with our, uh, our um, EVGA board. Okay, installing the last screw here for the radiator installation. I'm gonna do a light, it's a little tighten. Get this out the way here. Do a little tightening. Just... All right, and then we have our radiator in place now. So let's go ahead and turn this back to where we had it. So as you can see here, we have this radiator installed. We have our AIO cooler here. We have it attached, the, 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 the pump um, and heat sink is attached to the processor here now. Uh, we have our memory in place. We have our solid state drive in place. And now we wanna move on to the next thing, power supply. Go ahead and let's move this to the side for a second here. And what I wanna show you is this is the power supply that I ended up getting. Um, it is a Seasonic, a 750 watt power supply. Um, did a little bit of a calculation to understand just how much power is gonna be needed based on the 2080 Ti graphics card that it was using, the motherboard, the AIO cooler, um, the memory and so forth. And um, I should still have a decent amount of headroom with this 750 watts. Um, if I wanted to add a second GPU, I would actually have to swap this out for probably either an 850 or something that's closer to a thousand watts. Um, but um, this, this should suffice. It was, it became highly recommended. Um, so let's go ahead and get this cracked open and uh, get this installed. Nice. Our cable connectors are here. All the cable connectors are here. Um, 
power in the back IEC for the IEC connector. Let's go ahead and take this, place this down here. Now, just as a little bit of additional information here, um, it, you know, after you kind of study this, it's pretty straightforward. If we look at one side of the power supply here, you see that you have the on off switch, you have the IEC connector here and you have this hybrid mode, which I'm not quite sure what that stands for, but we'll, come, we'll find out what that is. Um, and then here um, it's pretty, it's, it's laid out pretty well, you know, once you start to read it. So in between these two uh, little brackets they have here as identifiers, you have the motherboard. Um, and then here you have a CPU or a PCIe connection from for these three connections again it's CPU or PCIe and then for the connectors on the outside here he has peripheral ID um, or SATA or Molex connectors so uh, <clears throat> it, it's pretty straightforward as to what sort of connectivity goes where on the power supply itself um, so that's very very helpful uh, in terms of being able to get this set up and going but I wanted to just point that out um, that you know once you just study it just take your time um, it can be pretty straightforward as to what connects where and then a lot of these connectors too they can only plug in a certain way so you really can't uh, make a mistake you do need to be careful of that you're plugging the right connectors into the right locations and that you're not forcing uh, the connectivity because you don't want to break any pins or um, you know have essentially force the wrong connector into the wrong place so just wanted to point that out all right so we were looking at power and <laughs> And interestingly enough, I had to, to kind of pause and rewind a little bit. Uh, part of the issue I was having with regards to power was where some of the connectors were. And I originally had this, uh, this radiator uh, and fans for the AIO, AIO cooler installed, uh, but it was in the way of the uh, power connector for the CPU, as well as uh, the uh, connector for power uh, for, the, um, for the AIO as well. So I, I ended up <laughs> redoing a few things here. I ended up taking this out. I actually found out that I had the wrong uh, standoffs uh, in, installed and this was actually moving around. I had them in for an AM3 board as opposed to an AM4 board. So that was something I was able to do. I had to kind of clean off the, um, the thermal compound that I was using here um, and kind of start all over again. But this is now sturdy. This isn't shaking around as it shouldn't be. Um, but just some of the things that I ended up connecting here. One, again, the AIO, AIO cooler is now connected. Uh, I did go ahead and connect the system fans here. Um, the one at the rear here, which is going to be the outtake. The one at the front here, which is, uh, I believe, going to be the intake um, here. Um, and so both of these are now connected directly to the board. Uh, I also connected the um the, the the controller via usb over to the board here as well that's and we'll, and we'll do some cable management and everything with this when the time comes um, but for now just want to kind of get things in there um, from a power perspective and standpoint it did have the have the power supply is installed in here and i did connect as as i showed you before uh, where the cpu connects where the motherboard connects um, and then also where there are some PCIe connections. Uh, the one that I have here, I actually fed this through and this is actually gonna end up plugging into our graphics card, which we're gonna install very shortly. Um, <clears throat> but some of the other things I would have had connected were from the actual chassis itself. On the top of uh, the chassis, you can't really see them, but there are some LED lights um, for power on, um, for a hard dish uh, drive light, uh, as well as there's some USB connectors as well. Uh, I think there's also a standby light as well. So all of that was was done here. If you see the, this this set of wires here, uh, I ended up going ahead and, and, and giving uh, the chassis power uh, based on the connector. This is the front panel connection over here. Um, so some of the, the additional connections aside from that, from the chassis in and of itself is this connection. So there's two USB connections, uh, two USB 3.0 connections on the top of the chassis right in this area over here. So we're gonna go ahead now and plug this in. So let's bring this over. And again, I'll make this much prettier later on. Just make sure we have the tab lined up here. And this is our USB 3.0 connection here. And plug in there nice and easy, make sure everything lines up. And then a nice little push down and this pops right in there very nicely. 
Um, some other uh, connections here uh, also is for audio. Um, <clears throat> so the audio connection is uh, back here in the, 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 the corner of the motherboard here. So we'll also line this up and get this plugged in as well. Okay, so those are all of the, the connections that I've been able to uh, find so far. And I think that's, that, that covers everything again. We've got the power for the CPU on the upper uh, portion of the board here behind this radiator. We've got power to the motherboard, as you can see right here. Um, we have a power ready to plug into our graphics card. We have power down to our fans, which are both connected to uh, a couple of four pin connections on the board, which are specifically for the fans. These fans are actually being powered through the AIO cooler. So this is connected to the actual board itself and then these fans are connected to the AIO, AIO cooler. And that's how, um, the, you know, a part of the communication between the two um, as the temperature shifts and adjusts with the AIO cooler, it'll adjust the, 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 the speed of the fans. And then if you wanna use the software to actually monitor and adjust uh, fan speeds on our own without it being done automatically with the cooler itself, we have this USB connection plugged in down here so that we can actually pull up the software and um, make uh, custom or adju uh, adjustments and um, you know speeds and so forth for uh, our fans. Um, <clears throat> so, so one of the next things that we're, we're looking to do now is actually get our graphics card, um, and then we'll also be installing our Wi-Fi card. But right now, let's take a look at getting the graphics card. We're, we're, we're really close to to where I can at least before I start tying down cable management, we can get this thing fired up, make sure that it's running, we're getting a video output on it um, before I go through the trouble of making it look beautiful and pretty. So let's go ahead and get the graphics card. So for graphics card, we have this wonderful GE Force RTX 2080 Ti. This is the NVIDIA Founders Edition of the graphics card. Um, I kind of spared no expense with this particular build. I really wanted to um, make sure that it was something that was powerful, especially as I start to do more work in Unreal Engine and just wanted to give uh, as much real time uh, array tracing cores as I, as I possibly could with this particular build. I know that the new uh, newer 3000 series cards are coming out soon. Um, and I understand that they're going to kick butt on the 2000 series, but you know, I didn't want to want to want to wait. Uh, I wanted to make sure I spend a significant portion of the summer getting up to speed with virtual production and with Unreal Engine and being able to uh, to know my way around it um, and, and getting at uh, doing some some really cool projects right off the bat. Um, the wonderful thing about having a build like this is that when the time comes, um, I can take this card out. I could put in another machine, I can sell this card and I can upgrade. Um, again, you know, having uh, 64 gigs of RAM and being able to add another 32 gig for 96 and then another 32 gig for a full 128, just gives me that uh, ability to, to, to grow a little bit. Uh, this, this is an X570 board. Uh, so I believe that in order for um, that, you, you know, to get a, an upgrade on the chip, I'd be looking at the, uh, the Ryzen 9 uh, 3950. Uh, which is, I think, 16 uh, cores as opposed to 12. Um, but again, um, just there's room to grow with this build. So uh, I'm really you know, happy with what we've got here so far. I still have room here for another M.2 drive, and then I have plenty of room for SATA drives um, and, um, and so forth. So let's go ahead and take a look at this 2080 Ti here. Let's open this up. Right, it's a beautiful card. Look at this, it's beautiful. And let's put this down for a second. Let's see if there's anything else in here. We have a little box in here. Open this up. Some additional cabling, a little manual there. Adapter for video it looks like it goes from DVI to HDMI. Or no, I'm sorry, this is DisplayPort actually. So that'll be something useful. I don't need this at the moment, but we'll go ahead and put this back in here. And let's see if there's anything else in here. Or is that pretty much it? Looks like there's something else down here, or maybe that is just the case in and of itself. 
Yeah, I think that's just the case itself. So I think we have everything that we need here. So let's go ahead and take this plastic off of this card. Okay. And this is a, uh, a PCIe card, um, 16 lanes. So we're gonna end up putting this in to this position right here. This one actually has the metal reinforcement around it. Um, so, uh, and I believe that this is also the one that gets full speed. Uh, I believe this one uh, actually, uh, even though it fits, you know, um, a, a card that would be for 16 lanes, I believe this one only gets eight. Don't, don't quote me on that. I'm still learning as I go here, but uh, this one is the one that we're gonna install our, our graphics card into. Uh, so, let's see here, do we have any plastic covering this? Our card there. Um, we will leave that on for the moment. I'm not gonna try to take that off. I'm not even sure if that comes off. I don't think it does. It looks like it doesn't necessarily come off. So, oh here it does actually. There is a little piece of plastic here. But before I before I take that off, before I actually take this off, we want to make sure that everything is working properly in case I have to return something here. So let's go ahead and get these get this set up now. With this card, it's gonna end up taking up two slots, as you can kind of see right here already. Um, but kind of kind of get it in position here. I can see that it's gonna take up these two slots right here. And you know, so one of the things I think I wanna do before we go any further, once I pop this card in and I plug power into it, is we're gonna go ahead and do a test to see if we actually get video because all of our connectors will actually be in place. We'll actually have everything connected the way it needs to be for this to be uh, tested quickly just to see if it, it, it just runs, you know, doing a quick, uh, if you call it the benchmark test. So again, this is this pops right in. It has a, the slot that lines right up with what's on the card here, the little notch there. And we're going to pull this back out here. Let's just make sure my cables in here are clear of the card. So, when it's time for me to connect those, there's not an issue here. And let's just make sure that we have clearance with anything else. This right here, I was planning to kind of sneak here and around here. I don't want to block this USB connector and I don't want to go underneath the card for install here. So again, this will, the cable management is something I'll have to play with a little bit better here. Let me pull this out a little bit more, give me a little bit more slack there. It'll come around on the side like that, underneath here. Let me make sure I'm not putting too much tension on any particular portion of the board there. That looks like it might, it might work well. So let's go ahead and now plug this card in. Right there, and that's it. We have the card installed. Now we need to go ahead and get power connected to this card. So we have part one here. This goes on the other side, actually flips over like this. So we're going to go to this side first. The clips on the bottom there. I'm gonna go in order here. So these two will go in here and this set will go here. That's part one. And our second set, do the same thing. This first part will go here. So this second one goes here. We'll plug this in here. And our last connector will go here. And in there. Nice and easy. And there we go. So we are plugged in with power here. I'm gonna flip this around so that this doesn't strain too much there nicely. 
and we've got power connected. Now, I'm not going to go ahead, I'm not gonna lock this down just yet, but that's essentially our build. We've got, again, our case, we've got our AOI cooler, we've got a AMD um, Ryzen 9 uh, 3900 uh, uh, processor here. We have G-Skill, um, 64 gigs of RAM, two 32 gig modules of DDR4 at 3600 um we also have our graphics card uh, we have our uh, m.2 uh, um, solid state drive here which is one terabyte um, and then we have all of our other interconnections going here for uh, power with this fractal designs chassis so the next thing we're going to do is, is, is try to fire this up and see if we can actually get an image um, and before we actually go to the next step Okay, so here we are, moment of truth to see uh, if all my power connectors and everything here are working properly. Um, I do have this connected to uh, an HDMI, the HDMI output of the 2080 Ti card. Um, going into a monitor that's right here in front of me that you can't see. But I wanna just go ahead and fire this up. I have the uh, IEC cable connect plugged into the, uh, the power supply here and we are going to turn this on. First thing, we're gonna go ahead and flip the switch here. Okay. And we're going to, now we see, we do have the RAM lighting up here, which is good to know. Um, but let's go ahead and turn on the power. And in order to do that, hit the power button here. Looks like everything's powered properly. Waiting for an image to come up on screen here. And no image yet. Let's give it a second here. Looks like everything, at least from a power standpoint, is connected properly. We do have the AIO cooler um, and all the RGB lights are on up oh, and there we do there we go we do have image on screen um, we do get it says reboot and select proper boot device or insert boot media and select the boot device and press a key so we are on our way here and this is super exciting um, super super exciting um, I think what I'm actually going to do is work on getting uh, Windows 10 downloaded and running on this first to make sure that I can see Windows 10 running on this machine. Um, and then we'll actually go back, clean it up, tighten everything up. But I mean, it looks really, really nice um, just from here. If I was to turn this light off just to kind of get a little feel for what this RGB is all about, you know, uh, that's what we have here. And I'm definitely going to look forward to matching up some of these colors and uh, just having some fun with the overall uh, build of this. Now, ultimately, too, I also have a dark tempered uh, glass to kind of go over the top of this. Um, so super exciting, super exciting. One of the other things we still need to put in here is our Wi-Fi card, um, which we will do. Uh, but now that we actually have um, uh, a, an image uh, on the screen here, I'm going to go ahead and shut this down. Um, and I'm going to work on getting Windows 10 loaded on here. Then we're going to go ahead and upload uh, the, this this Wi-Fi card here. Let me turn this light back on. We're gonna get this Wi-Fi card installed, um, and um, we'll be on our way. Super, super excited. For this one, if I do decide to put this on the on the bottom here, what kind of room do we have? Are we? See the heat sink is pushed right up against this audio cable here. So I'm actually opt to put this in this other slot that's above it just to avoid overheating. Um, and in order for me to do that, I have to take out this other plate as well. Adapter here. And it is as 
simple as that. Friends, simple as that. Go ahead and secure this down. Yeah, I like to have that additional space in there. And I think if I did want to come back in and put another card in here, I would still have enough room here um, to put directly underneath it here. I think I have two slots here. So if I, if for any reason, I wanted to double up on graphics cards. Um, I'll have the ability to do so. Okay, so we are pretty much there. Um, go ahead and add these antennas on. And it's looking really, really good. Let's go ahead and top this off. And for the last piece here, let's go ahead and put on this dark tempered glass here feeling great about this build. This is one of my first large PC builds. And uh, so far, very happy with it. Things have seemed to kind of go off without a hitch, which is nice. Um, go ahead and wipe this, look at any fingerprints. And there we have it, y'all. So I'm proud to say that this beautiful machine running in the background here has been running flawlessly for the past six weeks. So I think I got it right. And now I'm looking forward to showing what I can actually do with this build. So stay tuned for the next video. And if this video was helpful to you, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Please comment below, subscribe, hit the notifications bell to my next and upcoming video. And until then, stay dope.